magic points, but uh, no spells either, so whatever. Um, but otherwise, decent, double digits and everything else. So um, we'll see as our runners get off what they are going to have in store for them. All right, so we got our checks here, and we've got... What do we have? The Fairy Flute. How uninteresting. We've got the Erdrix Tease, and we've got some monies. So Erdrix uh, Token is one of the three quest items we need. Sadly, we can't equip it and use it to kill monsters or anything, but it's one of the quest items that we need um, to build the Rainbow Drop, and we'll see more of that as we go on. Uh, now, the runners will have access to the treasury right away because of keys. You can see some people uh, going back in the throne room so they can set up a gold grind right off the bat. Um, we've got herbs. We do have gold, but DK, unfortunately, didn't quite get... Oh, we got the armor, though. Maybe we don't care about gold anymore. The armor's there, and the Stones of Sunlight. So two of the quest items already found, plus the Eredrix armor. Actually have a pretty nice start here. This is where we're also going to see as, as the runners finish checking the treasure. We might see a little bit of uh, of divergence. Uh, you can see DK heading to check out the basement. Um, I wonder if any of our runners are going to. Never mind, they're all headed straight for the basement. Sometimes you get a variation there where, you know, you go, some go to the basement, some go outside and start killing stuff. It looks like the basement, though, is just swamp north, so DK is going to head on out and see what he can find outside. Might still get some of that divergence then. Maybe some people will charge through and, and go see what's through the basement. Um, I can see Tilo Tilo's going, and um, looks like Marishu's going out. Uh, DK finds an armored knight, and the armored knight is uninterested. Tilo looks like he's found uh, ew, maybe a star river that doesn't hit him hard, but he doesn't hit very hard either. So he's going to go into, we affectionately call it tickle fight. He's doing zero to one. The star river is hitting him for one, and he's basically going to hope to outlast. Yeah, he's going to get out of there. So, so even with the Eredrix armor, you're going to see a lot of those tickle fights where you know we only have 10 attack power, 10 strength, so we're not doing much damage. Oh, the Magidraki is uninterested in Marishu's nice piece of armor, put him to sleep, and then killed him. So we're going to see a lot of tickle fights. You see Shaddy up there with the Druin. He's, uh, you know, zero to one-ing, but he's only getting hit for one to two because he has that armor. So a lot of tickle fights as our uh, runners look around for that noodle and try to pick up that first level. So I heard things were going quickly, uh, so I figured who better to help with quick things than me here. Hey, hey, Ron Burgundy joining in the booth here. Surprise, surprise. It's supposed to be chaotic. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's Amazing. Been chaotic too. <laughs> well, I mean, they, what? Three minutes in, they've already got the token, the Stones of Sunlight, and Erdrick's armor, and four deaths combined. Yeah, it's definitely a nice start for quest items. You've got two quest items already uh, already taken care of. you got the armor, which is really nice. You see that big patch of swamp over the left? Not a problem. Uh, but there's just nothing for them to kill, huh? This 10 strength, they can't make any progress on any enemies. They're not getting hit very hard, but they cannot... Uh, they just can't make any progress. Marishu is going to explore out and see if maybe he can find... I guess he's looking for a town where maybe he could spend some money, but... Uh, for a weapon or something, but yeah, it's kind of rough going at the moment. Yeah, no spells, and even if there were spells, no MP to cast them, a little bit problematic, and wow, the Metal Slime just kind of dinking and dunking with the sleep and hurt combination. Those Metal Slimes hurt. Um, yeah, one of the things that I'm mentioning about trying to find the noodle, uh, I do believe the noodle is not allowed to have any abilities. So as soon as you see something like that metal slime casting a spell of sleep or the cast of hurt or uh, the spell of hurt, you know it can't be the noodle. You might still be able to kill it, but you know it's not the noodle. So I see Marisho doing some exploration, and you kind of see DK and Shaddy hanging around the castle a little more, hoping to eventually find either the noodle or something they can kill. Hmm, well, running away there from a gold man. Now, that was uh, that was one of the tickle fights. I don't know if there was something that the gold man had as I was getting into the broadcast booth and might have missed. Ooh, the werewolf also not caring about the armor. Hits for 23 despite the armor. Yeah, I don't know. The tickle fights are always tough for me um, because if you know it's the noodle, you don't mind trying to hit it five times. But for all you know, that gold man could have... 200 HP, in which case <laughs> I'm not going to stick around and, you know, hit it for 0 to 1 until I get 200. So it might have just been a case of, uh, you know, looking for better opportunities there, something that might be a little faster. 
Ooh, and the Poltergeist with the DL2 breath. As DK finds out the hard way. Yeah, we also see, too, uh, one of the other features of the Noodle is there. I don't believe the Noodle can give more than 64 experience. So usually you see the Noodle as kind of a lower experienced monster. Uh, generally with very fast experience, that's not an issue because you usually need, I don't know, maybe three, four, five experience. But in this seed, uh, well, in all Chaos Seeds, the amount of experience to level is random. In this seed, 19 experience the first level. So once they find the Noodle, it might be two or three uh, killings the Noodle to get that first uh, that second level. Oh boy, and we've got a Rogue Scorpion putting DK to sleep, Marishu working on a Druin, and Tila with a Scorpion, and yes, yeah, zero combined experience, five, almost six minutes in. And that's with the armor. Can you imagine if there was no armor? Like, uh, ugh. I like that DK has got the, uh, he's saved and he's resetting now. The Magician, oh man, the Magician hits hard. The Warlock has hurt more. There's just death everywhere. No one able to find that noodle yet. Yeah, those, uh, those Magicians and Warlocks are certainly making the morale of our runners disappear. Oh, speaking of the morale disappear, I think DK might have found the noodle. He found our first kill on the red slime. He crit it, and the red slime was worth five experience. So if that is, in fact, the noodle, uh, well, regardless if it is or not, we're going to need four of those red slimes in total for level two. Wow. And of course, the other problem is since DK crit it, who knows if you can even attack that? Who knows if that's even a noodle, right? But even if that's the enemy you're looking for, it's going to take 412. Marisho got something down there, I see. He's, uh, he's up to level 4 all of a sudden. I didn't see what he found, though. So Marishu up to level 4 with heal and hurt. So he can start throwing that hurt spell around, and that could be very effective. If you find something with low HP, cast a couple hurt spells, the blue dragon running away. So that might be a weaker enemy to be on the lookout for later. Uh, it looks like Marishu, thanks to the instant replay, was chipping away at a druin. And that druin was able to provide, looks like, 86 experience. And now that puts Marishu off to the races here. Oh, wow. He, I, I saw him fighting a Druin for a very long time, and I kind of thought he was going to run eventually or whatever. He did eventually get it, so good good job by him to stick with that. Um, yeah, he had it go on for a very long time and eventually got that Druin. Yeah, now he can hurt them, and he's good. He had a Rogue Scorpion for only five. DK's found a town right next to Sherlock, and it's Breconary, so we'll get a shop check. What will be the sale of the seed? Oh, Ooh. nothing great here. Yeah, inflation has hit Alifgard, apparently. Yikes. I mean, the silver shield for 4,600, and yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah, everything. Apparently, at least uh, this seed looks to be all along Rodeo Drive. Yeah, but what's not among Rodeo Drive is that fairy water. So DK finding Breconary gives him access to some fairy waters, and he's going to go out, and I bet he's going to go uh, get some kills with that. The fairy water doing 9 to 16, so he's going to have a much better time with those fairy waters, I'm guessing. Marishu did was able to find Harp Cave, I believe, up to the north before he finds the Poltergeist has uh, DL2 breath. DK does... Fairy Water, a Blue Dragon, and now he's off the races too. He's going to pick up his level 4 and he's going to go have Heal, Hurt, and he's also going to be able to use those spells to his great, great advantage. So, DK finding Breconary. Didn't find any weapons or anything, but found the Fairy Waters, and those are just as good. Well, he found a weapon. It was just rather pricey. The normally 9,800 gold Flame Sword uh, on sale this week for... Almost a thousand more than that, at about 10,800 something. Because why not? Oh, Shaddy's into Breconary too, so we'll have to see if, uh, if he picks up some fairy waters as well. He'll see the bad news about the exp well, relatively expensive shops. Uh, dyslexia, 10,580, so yeah, inflated a little bit. It's uh, apparently they. Uh, <laughs> They went to the uh, the castle of Bon Malmo in Dragon Warrior Four and uh, gave those kind of prices to offer for weapons instead of armory. 
Oh man, look at the adorable towns right now. DK missed them on his screen. Oh, the wizard kills Shaddy, but he's seen them. Uh, right next to Sharlock, right to the left of Sharlock, is two towns right next to each other on adjacent tiles. They're so adorable. DK back into Breconary, I'm guessing, to uh, maybe buy some more fairy waters, maybe get some herbs and some uh, uh, some dragon scale stuff taken care of. I think he spotted on the corner there. I think he spotted that town. So we'll probably go check out the town and find our two back-to-back -to -back towns. Um, Shaddy back in the treasury, hunting around for herbs and things. Probably more gold, right? Uh, yes, the bottom left one is gold. All right, Tilo Tilo's heading down towards, I believe, where Sharlock is, and I believe that's where he's going to find Breconary as well. So he'll get... Oh, no, he's heading north to, I think, Staff Cave is up there. So he's, he's starting to explore, though. So he'll he'll run into Breconary sooner than later. DK maybe didn't see that town, that, that one town. I thought it was on his screen briefly, but he didn't see the two towns next to Sharlock. So um, I'm sure Shaddy will head there, and we'll see um, what they are. Marisho using that Hurt spell to get level 8 as well, and um, uh, it had a little HP, huh? A little bit, but also of note, hurt more acquired. Well, I was I was saying before the seed. I don't know if it counts as commentator's curse, but I, I was saying before the seed that uh, hurt more is kind of overrated in chaos because you learn hurt more and then everything resists it. Marisho though hits the first hurt more, so it doesn't count apparently. My curse doesn't count, but the magician's only worth thirty four, but it gets him a level. Again, lots of HP, so our runners might be on the hunt for that death necklace, maybe? It's a very double-edged sword in Chaos, especially because you, you think it's good for the second form of the Dragon Lord, and then the first form of the Dragon Lord hits you for 95 HP, and with your death necklace you have maybe 102 if you're, you know, lucky, and... Uh, that kind of that kind of messes with things a little bit. Yeah, the death necklace, an item that you can put it on, it will curse you. It will um, give you 10 extra attack power in exchange for 25% of your HP. So in seeds like this, at least in standard seeds like this, when your HP is really high and your strength is... Well, our strength got up to 50, by the way. So we've been picking up some strength as well. Maybe not quite as much as HP. Um, so it's kind of things when you have lots of HP and not as much strength, you maybe start to think about. But yeah, in Chaos, it is certainly... Definitely a double-edged sword, we'll say. Yeah, you tend to see it use less in chaos. I know that uh, in my race last night, a lot of people were thinking that I was looking for the death necklace, and it wasn't really on my radar. I, you know, I had found it eventually, but I had no intentions of using it. Tilo Maybe is our runners feel differently. Yeah, Tilo's on the board, by the way. He has, uh, he got a, I missed what he killed, but he just got a scorpion there. So Tilo gets big power, well, he gets several levels there, including a big power boost to go up to six. And uh, I think I saw Shaddy just got something too. I think it must have been, if he didn't level, oh no, he didn't, he ran, sorry. And then he got killed by the Magician. I don't think we've gotten the adjacent town search yet. I think Shaddy's the only one that's seen the adjacent town. Several runners have seen Breconary. Oh, Marishio might be headed there. Um, several runners have seen Breconary. We haven't gotten those adjacent towns yet. Uh, DK has missed them by just one screen. And Shaddy died trying to head over them. So we'll see Marishio hurt mooring a Drakeema for barely anything. And... Uh, one of the towns is Hawksness because of course it is. But Garen had the other one. Definitely the more desirable of the two, as you have the three treasure chests in the back that are easily accessible because no keys are required this time, so just go right on through the door. There's the weapon shop, and there's a staircase in the back that leads to something else. Potentially more treasure chests. That would be ideal. Yeah, we're still looking for the Silver Harp to complete our little quest collection. We also could use an Erdrick Sword, of course. Uh, let's check the weapon shop. Oh, large shield's cheap and half plate's pretty cheap, so I think we'll... Oh, we don't need a half plate, do we? Never mind. It was still cheap. Yeah, no, always good to look at these things. You're browsing the armors. You have no intent to buy them. <clears throat> Usually. Anyway, um... 
who would who would ever sell Erdrich's armor? That's definitely not a thing anyone would do. No, definitely not. Um, well, so <laughs> you know, you say that, but because the armor's right there in the treasury, if Erdrich's armor actually, since that price is randomized too, it's not just the one gold, I have seen and occasionally utilized the technique of buying a cheap armor to get my Erdrich's armor traded in for a bunch of money and then just go back to Tantagel in this case here, search the chest again to reacquire Erdrich's armor, and that's a good way to make some pretty decent bank. Oh, that's right. I forgot it was randomized. Yeah, definitely. So actually, there you go. Sell the armor. That would be uh, maybe a good plan. Hey, who knew? Eh, it, you can at least check it out. I know that last night... Uh, I kind of took a flyer out on it. It was maybe only worth about 90 gold, so I said, nah, it's not worth it. I like Marishu going to check Hawksness. He does have the Hurtmore spell, so if he finds something that's uh, susceptible to Hurtmore, not only can he check the tile, he might get a grind going here, too. He's killed a couple things on the way in, but, boy, really not worth a whole lot, so uh, as far as experience goes. Ooh. Another death for Shatty. Thanks to the Magi Wyvern and well, Stone Man being a little uh, little problematic. Yeah, Tilo going at it with Hurt and cast Hurt a whole bunch to find out that they're not worth that much experience, but still he'll take the experience. And on the spike tile, I believe we got, I think Marish Marishu got there. We got the Demon Knight? Correct. And unfortunately, Hurtmore doesn't hit. So this could be a little bit uh, difficult. He's going to try again. Oof, 0 for 2. And can't, oh boy, and can't attack. Can't hit it with 50 attack powers. This might be, this might be one we leave for a while. Oh, but he did hit it once. There we go. Oh, well, that's not going to be a grind spot. Yeah, the bad news is it was worth six experience. The good news is he's got a silver harp. Uh, so Marishu, I believe, has seen harp trade in cave. Uh, he saw a rainbow drop in the back of Garenham, so he could actually trade in everything and get the rainbow drop, which actually wouldn't be that bad a play because Sherlock's right there. You could run into Sherlock and see if maybe there's a bright, shiny sword for you. And at that point, it's just grind and go mode. Yeah, in fact, that's all Marisho needs, is he just needs the um, he just needs the sword. I mean, depending on how much strength you get, sword possibly optional. Um, he just needs the sword, and he is, yeah, absolutely, in grind-and-go mode already, 17 minutes in. Shaddy has finally made it to our adjacent towns. He saw them first, but uh, he's finally made it to our adjacent towns, and he's in Garretham checking it out. Tila Tila has found Remolder with an herb. Um, I don't know if he's done his weapon shop check yet. I Nope, he hasn't. He's going to go check it now. Well, I think we've seen all the goodies, right? Uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of interest there. He could get himself a bamboo pole, but... Hey, it's on sale for half price. Oh, look at that. Tilo Tilo taking um, your uh, your suggestion into account there. He found the Erdrich's armor will sell for six grand. So he could sell his Erdrich's armor, and he is. He's going to purchase the silver shield. This is exactly what you're talking about, Ferran. He's going to sell his Erdrich's armor, get himself a silver shield, and go pick up the Erdrich's armor once again from the treasury. So there's that heads up play from Tilo that you were talking about, Ferran. Oh, good to see somebody implemented it. See, and and you are to oh, who would ever sell Erdrich's armor? Uh, well, there you go. It's uh, this is one of those times where it paid off literally and figuratively. Well, every time I have, I mean, every time someone has, it's been worth one gold. So, DK enter a molder to get his herb, and uh, Marishu is back into Garenham. I believe. Did he make his way to the staff cave? Pretty sure he did, right? He was in Staff Cave a second ago, so he's about, yeah, he's about yes. to get his rainbow yeah. drop. Yeah, Mar Marishu did while we were discussing the merits of the uh, expensive Erdrich's armor. Yeah, so Tilo back to the castle to reclaim his Erdrich's armor. So I guess if he really wanted to, it's what, two Erdrich's armors to the flame, to the flame sword? So uh, he could decide to do that if he wanted to. So That's we still don't know where this... Yeah, decision here as far as what to do. 
I was going to say, we don't know where the sword is, but if the sword were in Sharlock, and we don't know that, if the sword is in Sharlock, we could potentially have all of our quest items, all of our story stuff within, like, two screens of the castle. This could be, like, the smallest necessary map ever, I think. So Marachute looks like was doing kind of a mini grind, going into Garenham, opening the two treasure chests, and is getting the silver shield that way. Ah, okay, so he was figuring he was going to go check that, he was going to go get his rainbow drop anyway, so yeah, why not? Uh, makes sense, so he's got his uh, silver shield, so he got a couple of silver shields running around now. Definitely like the silver shield in Chaos, you have no idea what Dragonlord 1 or Dragonlord 2 have in store for you, so the more defense, the better. The more stats in general, the better, so those silver shields for Marishu and Tilo Teal will be really helpful. DK has found bonus caves, so we'll see what's there. Marishu using the rainbow drop, and he is going to go check those seven in Sherlock, hoping for a sword. DK just getting the wings out of bonus. And, by the way, Shaddy on the board, so he's off and running. He's got his Hurt and Heal spell. Even though he's kind of, looks like he's behind in experience, now that he has that Hurt spell, he's going to be able to use that and pick up lots of experience quickly. So he'll be right back in this really shortly as far as the experience is concerned. Marishu sword hunting has found some gold. He's found some fairy water. He's found some herbs, so no pointy swords yet. Some more gold. Some more gold. Uh, some more fairy water. So it looks like the Sherlock. Good, good play to check Sherlock. There were seven treasure chests in there, but unless it's here, a uh, fighter's ring for plus two attack power, but no sword. So our runners are going to need to go run around outside in the world and look around for for that sword somewhere else. Tilo Tilo finally killing a Metal Slime. I think that's the first Metal Slime kill we've seen, and they end up being worth a grand total of 10 experience. Uh, it finds the Scorpion right afterwards worth a touch more for 81. A little on the stingy side. Meanwhile, level 10 here for DK. Mild stats, but heal more acquired. There you go. That's a pretty important one. Um, nice to have heal more at 10. That's relatively early. I mean, um, you know... Uh, We'll certainly take it. All of our runners, I don't think any of our runners are going to try to go on level 9 or anything, so it's not like anyone's going to be waiting around for heal more, so nice to see that there. Marishu hurt mooring a wolf lord for 37 experience. Yeah, there's not a lot of experience out there, is there? Uh, chat noting, imagine someone hitting level 10 about a minute after you get your first kill. That is interesting to imagine. Kind of a wild scenario, I would think. Feels kind of normal for chaos mode. But again, Shaddy's got a lot of uh, exploration done. Now that he has his hurt spell, he'll be able to grab that experience and hopefully catch up. All right, so we're looking around for our sword, and uh, let's see, where are the locations? We've got uh, Guelph pointing out in chat, he's calling the sword in the overworld with single-digit coordinates, so it could be on the overworld. Um, we could have our sword hanging out in coal, we haven't seen coal yet. We also have our two dungeons, our mountain cave and Garen's grave that could house a sword as well. And then of course we always have the possibility, Breconary has a flame sword, maybe we'll find, uh, we get a ton of strength later on, our runners decide, who needs a stinking sword? Yeah, too much effort for Erdrick. Yeah, although as um, as Lorgon points out, we have kind of some low stats, so if you're going to need to go grind anyway, it's not like we have a great grind spot they're rushing to get to. You might as well go search the world and try to find mountain, try to find grave, try to find something to grind on, something to give you some experience somewhere while you're hunting around for that sword, I suppose, because it's not like we got uh, a whole lot else to do. I do wonder if we'll see anyone check Swamp for the uh, for a grind spot, or maybe even Marishu with his Rainbow Drop. Maybe even check Sharlock grind spot for a uh, for a uh, for a grind as well, or Sharlock Spike Tile for a grind as well. 
with all of our quest items nearby, our armor nearby, uh, you know, a couple of runners have taken care of their silver shield needs. Um, you know, it's pretty much just a weapon and where are you going to grind that's going to make the uh, the real big determination. As Tilo Tilo finds Harp Cave and Shaddy just picks up two levels, including that big power boost. So he's going to enjoy that, of course. And we haven't seen Tablet Cave either, have we? Ooh, okay. Nope, we haven't. Ah, Tablet Cave. But yes, that is another spot where it could be, huh? So that's 11 potential chests and two search spots. And I don't believe we've seen any cursed belts yet either, right? Sherlock didn't have any. Garenham didn't. Um, you know, there was none in bonus. There was none in um, in uh, in the treasury or anything. So we don't know if there are anything on, if there is anything on that overworld spot or coal. Of course, we know Hawksness because um, Marish is already able to check that. But coal and coordinates not guaranteed to have anything. Tilo huh. Tilo did purchase a bamboo pole, which I which I'm loving. I wonder if he's thinking flame sword now with his Erdrix armor trick. It looks like he's he's eyeing that leather armor. Mm, maybe. He's decided against it for now. Maybe he'll uh, keep that in the back of his mind, though. Maybe he'll go hunting for Erdrick's sword, and if it uh, proves to be problematic to find, possibly uh, go back to Breckenary and, and acquire himself a flame sword. Right, so that's kind of the big question we've got left. Now, even though we know where the harp is and Marishu knows where the harp is, um, uh, Tila Tila with his hurt more, he sees Hawksness first, so he's not interested in that. He's going to go uh, refill in Garenham maybe and try it. He does have hurt more. Uh, it'll be interesting to see too. Uh, ooh, DK has coal, so maybe an Erdrick sword here. Well, we'll see. Heading four steps south of the baths, and we have Nada. All right, we'll check that one off the list. Uh, so Guelph gets one step closer to his prediction of overworld with single-digit coordinates being correct. So yeah, we got a couple of kind of interesting things. One thing, I mean, with the grind, where's the sword? Uh, Marishu, even though I think all of our runners have seen Hawks, is Marishu the only one who's actually uh, defeated the Demon Knight there? Remember, it took him three Hurt Moors uh, before he finally was able to land one. I wonder what resistance they have. We might find our uh, our other runners when they go to try to use their Hurt Moors, Tilo Tilo back into Hawksness with a fresh batch of, well, 21 MP. Fresh batch of MP. Um, haven't mentioned the MP is atrocious. Uh, I wonder if they'll have some trouble with only, well, now three Hurt Moors to her Tila Tila side hitting one on that Demon Knight. Meanwhile, DK has found the Mountain Cave, so there are five treasure chests here. The first one on the first floor is an herb, and then we have four more in the next... Well, I guess uh, the, the basement of the Mountain Cave, or deeper into the Mountain Cave. Tilo Tilo going for his hurts and does not land them. So he's going to try to chip away, but I don't think it's going to go too well for him. He's going to run. Can't get away. Now, he's going to get killed here, but he's going to... Oh, sorry. We have an Erdrick sword find on DK's side. It is the second chest. And we also have a cursed belt right next to a torch and then there's the one deep in the mountain cave we'll see if dk goes for it here but the big find is the erdrick sword yeah that's huge now dk still looking around for the harp he doesn't know that the harp is in hawksness yet in fact from his point of view he's only seen one curse belt so uh that could mean coordinates or hawksness so he's finishes out in case the harp's there we know it's not we also know the fighter's ring's not there as well, so not much to find there. I guess maybe a death necklace, but he has to finish it out, and he's going to continue exploring. But yeah, now we know where all the pieces are. Uh, Erdrick's sword in Mountain Cave, just south of Coal. And that's where Marishu is with very minimal resources, taking out the Red Dragon. All right, he only has to get to the second one, though, and Marisho does have that knowledge. He already has the harp and the rainbow drop. He knows that all he needs is that Erdrick sword. So once he finds the sword, he'll probably be content to just death warp out, or he certainly won't mind death warping out. 
DK meanwhile's found the grave. Unfortunately, because he doesn't have the harp, he's gonna end up clearing this. And uh, we know there can't be anything in here aside from maybe a death necklace, but uh, uh, he doesn't know that yet. So he's gonna go through and do his checks. We got a torch, we got some money. We got a poltergeist and there's the death necklace. All right, so DK not gonna full dive the graves. So that's good, that'll save him some time. Um, he is still on the hunt for the harp, but uh, I believe, let's see, he knows that the search, he, he's seen one curse belt, so he knows that it has to, the harp has to be on the overworld, right, somewhere? Well, not necessarily. Does he have all the overworld items? He's got the armor, the token, the stones, the death necklace, the fairy flute, right? Yeah, the fairy flute was in the throne room. Right, so he's seen the one curse belt. Does that have to correspond to the harp at this point? I believe so, that, or at least that it corresponds to a search spot. Now... Oh, right, right. He wouldn't know which search spot, but he'd know it'd have to be a search spot of some sort. Correct. Yeah, so using that knowledge to, to outside out of the grave and not waste time checking the bottom where he knows that he can't find anything. Now, the concern could be, that uh, at least on DK's side, is, well, what if the harp's on the overworld spot and I have to go find Cantlin? That could potentially be a time sink. Of course, yeah. So he's going to keep exploring for Cantlin. That that makes sense. Marisho, as point out in chat, he did, he did get his Erdrick sword. He is in grind and go. But uh, question is, where are you going to grind? Haven't really seen a whole lot of enemies that give a ton of experience. And the go part, uh, they have 33 MP. And I feel like four heal mores is probably not enough. I would think not, just because of all of the potential chicanery that may occur. Yeah, in Chaos, you oftentimes are going to want to use some stop spells on DL2, or you're going to maybe want to put DL1 to sleep, or maybe try to stop spell DL1, or hurt more or something, whatever. And uh, 33 MP does not give you many options. Plus, I mean, of course, the 99 attack power is not so great either. Yeah, kind of hard to melee if uh, you're pretty much zero to one yeah so shaddy into the shaddy into hawksness the uh drolls popping up on our screen here oh, look at that four hp and 142 experience so they're probably and only 10 agility they can almost for sure be one shot and uh, 142 experience if you can find them somewhere or if you can find them reliably i should say I believe we did see some of runners earlier chipping away on drolls, though, right? So they may have found them. Um, Shaddy onto his Demon Knight and Hawks, and he's going to throw a Hurt more. And again, we've seen the Demon Knight is resistant to it, so Tilo Tilo unable to get it. Shaddy misses his first one, goes to attacking, and stays with attacking. Ooh, Marishu realizing that the Red Dragon, well, they are continuing their role of the Fun Police, hitting for... 60-something and 50-something and sending Marishu back. And heal more as well, as uh, as Angel points out. So, glad to see some things never change, right? Oh, Tilo Tilo has a Spectre at 152. That's a decent amount of, uh, of experience. And uh, kind of a meh level there. Some good HP, but the strength and agility not really what we'd hope for. Look, he immediately gets another Spectre, but has to run on low resources. Marishu interested in that spike tile and that red dragon again, so he's gonna go for that red dragon. It's a pretty decent experience, 108, and if the Hurt Moors hit, he can just gather 108s over and over and over again and so far so good dk has got cantlin so uh he's gonna find probably pretty shortly here that there are no coordinates and after finding there are no coordinates he's gonna be heading right back to the castle right back to hawksness and um looking for has he been in hawksness he might oh is he, he's the one that didn't see it i don't believe so 
Oh, so he might continue exploring for Hawksness, not having seen those two towns just the edge of, Cam of, of Sharlock. A large shield purchase on DK's side. I'll point out that even though Shaddy took a while to get started, he's made it up to level 9. Um, our other runners are all level 12, so Shaddy not too far behind, just three levels behind, and if he finds a nice grind spot, uh, he could make that up. Although Marisho, making this uh, Red Dragon sort of work, um, he's able to kill a couple with melees after he's out of MP. The only problem with this is, of course, with only 33 MP, it's going to take a lot of trips back in, but, um, you know, it's very close. Ooh, some nice power on 13. Surprised art thou. Not, not so surprised, but DK continues exploration looking for uh, Hawksness. So at this point, DK knows that Hawksness has to have the, uh, the heart, but he's not aware of the location of Hawksness yet. So, of course, with Marishu in grind and go mode, and he's found his spot. He likes the red dragons underneath the castle, which is decent. It's a good grind, uh, at least as good as anything else we've seen out there. He's going to um, be able to devote all of his time and resources to that, and he's going to start racking up those 108s, and he's going to start uh, expanding upon this experience lead he's built. He's got all the information he needs, so uh, I think, and he's got an experience lead. Definitely, he's got the lead here. Um, we did have a good race as far as, uh, you know, second place still matters. So we've got an interesting race building up for second as Shaddy has picked up his Airdrick sword. So again, even though he's kind of a little far farther behind, he's got, uh, he's got knowledge of Hawksness. He's got, uh, he's got his sword in tow. Pretty sure he's seen Harp Caves. He's got a lot of, uh, exploration done already. Yeah, he's been able to check out a few things here and there along the way but still has some work to do, and looks like it'll just be a little bit of savviness to get to that point. Yeah, this kind of rings very similarly to uh, his week one race, where um, where he was kind of behind on experience a little bit, but had an exploration edge and was able to kind of build on that, take his exploration and, uh, and get to grinding and get, uh, get that experience lead narrowed down quickly. So we'll see if he can do the similar thing this week. Tilo Tilo back in uh, Breconary. It looks like he's decided that the Erdrick sword is a pain to go pick up. He sells his Erdrick's armor and finds out he's just shy of the flame sword. Oh no. Yeah, well Breconary is close enough that uh, that you can go uh, you can go play this little game a couple times if you need to, but uh, we'll see if maybe he has something else he can sell or, or if he goes, oh he's going to go to Garenham and pick up a little more money. That makes sense. Yeah, there are a couple of treasure chests back there with gold. While Tilo Tilo does that, Marish, uh, Marishu's been continuing his grind, and he's picked up 14. The amount of experience is random, so we don't know how much experience they need, but Marishu picking up those 108s time and time again has picked up 14, and it looks like 15 as well. So level's pretty tightly... To, ooh, there's nice power. Still, MP is the problem. We're still sitting on, I do believe, it's about 33 MP max on level 15, and that's... I don't care how much power you have, that's not going to get the job done. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of a... Oh, well, okay, we have crossed the 40 mark. We're at 42. But here comes level 16. One power, one speed, 16 hit points, one magic point. Yeah, you can see on the stat screen there, everything is green, everything's in go mode. Um, you know, 132 attack power, you're pretty happy about that. Um, 132 HP, you're talking about, you're thinking about doubles, especially with your 90 defense power, you're thinking about doubles on DL2. But then that magic, sticking out like a sore thumb, you've got five heal mores, and that's not going to do it. DK finally finding Hawksness, by the way, so DK maybe taking the lead for a second here, he's going to hopefully be able to get this Demon Knight taken care of, he's going to throw some hurt mores at it, I bet, after he sees this one. And if he gets the harp, I'm pretty sure he's seen Harp Cave, he knows that Rainbow Drop is in the back of Garen Hammer, he'll know it in a second, and um, he'll be in grind and go as well. Boy, just a matter of getting that hurt more to land. And uh, DK's got four more tries at it. Took took uh, Marisho three. So let's see if DK can get it here. These Demonites really resistant to hurt. And hurt more. 
Yeah, that almost feels vanilla in that regard. Yeah, Marisha with three. Looks like he was lucky. He probably wasn't thrilled to see it take three times, but he might have been really lucky to hit three because we saw Tilo, Tilo, and Shaddy both go in there and throw hurt mores. And um, it got to the point where both of them just took off and started exploring other places, decided it wasn't worth it. So Marisha really benefiting, it looks like, from getting that Demon Knight down. Everyone's throwing hurt mores at it, but he's the only one to hit one. And just like that, Marishu has quickly and, I don't know about quietly, expanded to about a 1,700-1,800 experience lead. Interesting what DK is doing. He's uh, putting Hawks aside for the moment, and I wonder if he's going to do a, a grind right now. Looks like, yeah, he's going to check out the tile. He knows that uh, the harp has to be in Hawksness. He knows where the harp trade-in is. He knows where... The, um, the Jerk Cave is. He knows that's all he needs. There's no armor or sword waiting for him in Sherlock. So he's going to do his grind, it looks like, now and hope that with the extra stats, the Demon Knight is a piece of cake later on and just do all the errands later. So I think I like that from him. He knows that's all he needs. He knows there's no rush for it. He's going to pick up his levels first and then deal with that Demon Knight at a higher level. Meanwhile, Shatty running into a Green Dragon... Punching rather hard, and also has that pesky sleep spell, and gets slept and wrecked after three rounds, and is heading back to start. Oof, yeah, those green dragons do not look fun. One of the other things about uh, about Chaos Mode, in Sherlock, uh, they put the top ten most evil, horrible monsters from the seed as ranked by a magical formula so you see all the greatest hits from the seed popping up in Sherlock. it is short Sherlock, but i mean still um you have to start wondering things like we're gonna see that green dragon show up there in Sherlock. we have to deal with him later uh you know definitely a possibility oh man Tilo Tilo looks like he's doing a uh, looks like he's doing a preemptive princess grind, which uh, preemptive princess rescue, I mean, which uh, you know makes sense. He still needs the harp. He still needs the sword. Um, I believe he he wouldn't have seen any curse belts. I think the only curse belt we ever saw was in Mountain Cave, um, along with the, the Erdrich sword. So he wouldn't have seen any curse belts. But from his point of view, the uh, so harp or sword could easily be on the overworld, and he wants a princess to rescue. He wants to have the coordinates right away. Um, unfortunately, we know that there's nothing on the on the overworld. The one other little thing the princess will do is the princess will tell you how far it is to the next level, which can be useful in chaos. If you're thinking it's go time, you're thinking it's borderline, you can use Gwaylin's love and find out you need two experience to the next level and just pick it up, or find out you need 34,000 to the next level and maybe leave it. So it'll have that little side benefit too. Don't think I've ever seen a 34,000. I don't think that's even possible, but you know, whatever. No, I've definitely seen five-digit uh, requirements. I've seen where a good oh, ten or eleven thousand something has been required, but I don't think I'm pretty sure that it caps at a certain point on the high end. Yeah, but still having that knowledge that so Tila Tila will have the princess and he'll have that knowledge of you know oh the next level is just fifty experience away sure I'll pick it up or oh the next level's eight thousand away like ah maybe we'll just go now. Uh, DK picking up 15, so he's making good progress on this grind. He's also kind of agreed that with Marishu that this is uh, this is the best we're going to find. There weren't any real great enemies on the overworld. No no simple kills for 255 hanging anywhere, so there's going to be content to get their 108. Uh, DK up to 16, and Marishu finally gets 17, about 2,000 experience later, with four magical magic points. All right, 47. Sadly, if they're magical magic points, you can only use them once. You can't use them twice. So Marishov still still going. So we know that there's a pretty large gap to 17. And really, I mean, uh, like I was saying earlier, our runners are going to take anything, any stats. You, know, you always want as many stats as you want. But really, there, Marishov and DK is even does at 16 knows they're looking for the MP. We need the MP. Well, 18's quick, quick, quickly behind Marishu gets. Seven magic. It's getting better. Yeah, we're, we're over 50 now. 164 HP, though. That's pretty silly. Uh, 92 defense power is awfully nice as well. So the one other side effect this is having, 
Uh, you know, it's getting all the other stats really high. So once the MP is finally ready to go, you'll be looking at silly amounts of HP, silly amounts of attack power. And that is, you know, could be nice against the Dragon Lord that decides to roll somewhere in the 200s of HP. Yeah, although those red dragons certainly not taking any prisoners. DK getting hit at level 16 with the Erdrich's armor and large shield for 80. Ooh. Uh, Tilo Tilo back in Hawksness trying that Demonite. Still can't get a Hurt more to land. So, man, I don't know what these Demonite's Hurt resistance is, but Marischal and his three, his three Hurt more to get it killed. Looking awesome right now. That's uh, that's what's really propelled him to this. Our other runners have been trying to get that Demonite killed. They've been looking around for where could that Harp be. And uh, Marischal knew where the Harp was really early on because he got that Hurt more. And uh, yeah, our other runners still trying to land a Hurt more on that Demonite. Amazing how much of a hindrance that is. DK gets a droll in between his red dragons, so he gets to add on a little extra nice experience. Shaddy's found another cave. I think that's got to be Tablet. Oh, no, he doesn't. Well, maybe he's seen it before. But either way, um, he knows that that's not really important, so he's going to move on. Uh, yeah, Shaddy did go into the that cave, which I believe was the Tablet Cave earlier, and it had a dragon scale. Ooh. I mean, the Dragon Scale is two defense. I mean, I can pick him up in any item shop anywhere, but he is our only runner with the Dragon Scale, so there's that. Indeed, and yes, you uh, you, you did see that correct. 54 magic points at level 18 at 2,700 to the next level. Yeah, Marishu just got the news from the king. It'll be 2,700 to the next level, also known as... By roughly 27 red dragons. I suppose it's technically less. They're, what, 107 each or something? So, might be here a minute. Yep, not going anywhere for a while. Grab your favorite candy bar of choice. As you're going through this grind, I'm sure Marishu just hoping that the next level has, I don't know, about 45 HP, uh, MP or something like that about. Not a whole lot more you can do. This grind has proved pretty effective right now. And um, you know, he's already up to 70, well now 74, almost 100 experience. So the grind's working out. Um, you know, He's able to get these 108s pretty quickly. But man, it's still going to take, what is that, several? That's like three or four. No, it's like four or five trips in to get this, uh, to get this uh, next level. Oh, man. At least it's close, though. At least it's close. Meanwhile, here is 17 for DK. Yeah, Beta Strep pointing out, I, I briefly mentioned it, but didn't go back to it. Beta Strep pointing out the Sharlock spike tile is unknown. So we'll see maybe if the uh, next level doesn't give a whole lot for Marishu in terms of MP, if he maybe switches over there. We'll see if maybe Shaddy or Tilo Tilo, once they find once they finally get their harp, uh, decide to go try that, that Sharlock spike tile, and maybe that propels them uh, to higher levels quicker. Well, the issue with that, I mean, Marish is the only one who has that access as the remainder of our runners are all still Demon Knight blocked in Hawksness. Right. DK has to do the Red Dragon because he's decided he's he knows the, where the harp is and he's decided he's going to get the levels before the harp. Um, our other runners, though, Shaddy and Tilo Tilo, look like they're hunting around for the harp. I know Tilo Tilo needs the sword as well. So maybe in their in their travels if they are able to get back to Hawks and get that harp maybe after they get that harp they'll decide to go and check the Sharlock spike maybe well there is the sword for Tilo all right so Tilo knows that he only needs the harp as well and he would have seen the curse belt already or is that in the other chest I just picked up the curse belt next to the torch all right so that curse belt gives him the knowledge that he is uh looking for a search spot and he has he has the princess i don't think he's seen cantlin yet though i think dk is the only one that's seen cantlin this is a situation too i don't I can't remember if Marisho was the one that got the death necklace or not. I feel like one of our runners did. Um, but with this high experience, you might 
maybe the death necklace here. I mean, death necklace we said was was a, a sort of eh, proposition earlier, but with 164 HP, even with the death necklace, you're going to be having a, a pretty fair amount of HP. So maybe something to keep in the back of your mind. If you're running low on heal mores, you need to do more damage. That eh, might be a thing you try. Yeah, 121. Uh, it's, a, it's a definite maybe. DK has it. Thank you. Thank you. DK has the death necklace. Um, yeah, and it's one of those things, too, where you can sort of gauge on Dragonlord 1. If Dragonlord 1 is is pretty tame or doesn't hit very hard, you might throw it on during that fight and and take the 10 extra power into your into your DL2 fight. Might be a thing to try, maybe. It is hard to say as Marishu back into the Swamp Cave. Still going, still grinding. Still incredible to me that he's the only one that's landed a hurt more on the Demon Knights. I feel like we've seen, you know, combined from other runners, but 10 or 12 other hurt more tries from our other runners combined, and uh, Marishu's the only one that got it, so he might be uh, really happy about that hurt more as it turns out. Amazing to think that that potentially could be the pivotal moment that having that hit. Oh, DK gets the 2,700 experience news. Uh, Marishu's about 1,000 shy now, so. Ah, and uh, there's the stats in the Demon Knight. Somewhat unsurprising. You're 1 in 16 to hit him with hurt more. Also, he's got a lot of HP and tons of agility, so you could also tickle fight him 51 times. Probably not recommended. No. So you're looking for a 1 in 16 chance of hitting that hurt more on it. And, uh, yeah. Well, good point from Angel FM. Uh, could be something you fairy water. Does the fairy water... Mm, you could, right? I guess they wouldn't know how much HP it has because they haven't hit a hurt more yet. Um, you could fairy water it and, and try to take it out that way. Fairy water's doing 9 to 16, so uh, it's worth a shot anyway. You don't know. It, it could have tons of HP. It also could have, you know, 20 HP, and fairy waters are very effective, so that's yeah, a good point. We'll see if anyone tries it. Oh, Kegel is telling us that Tilo tossed one at it. Yeah, we know that it's got 50 HP, so you'd have to toss... What is that? Four of them? Well, I guess, yeah, four of them at it to to, to have it... Well, four with good rolls to, to kill it. Yeah, something like that. Four with above-average rolls. Yeah, but that's with us having a knowledge that has 50 HP. You could be sitting there throwing fairy waters, not having any idea if you're close. But, uh, I mean, hey... You also have no idea if you're ever going to land a hurt more either, so. This is true. Marishu did get 19, and his reward for 19, as Beta Strep showing us, uh, telling us in chat, 0043. Congratulations. All that grinding you did. Super rewarded. Hmm. Let's keep on keeping on. The only slight good news is we get revenge on these red dragons. There's a lot of red dragon corpses building up, so we get to, you know, take out some aggression on them. Nothing like the vengeance uh, spike defeats, given the uh, given the enemy structure here. Yeah, they're spike defeats until you run out of MP and the red dragon hits you for 75. Then it's, it doesn't feel quite as spiteful anymore. <laughs> At least not on our side. No, it just builds up and begins the next round of spite. Because that's what we need. More spite, more reasons to spite a red dragon. <laughs> uh, Warlocks, we see up on Shaddy's side there. He's got another one that he's hurt more in. Warlocks for 172. So, uh, you know, Shaddy and Tilo Tilo have been able to, as they're exploring around for the harp and... Uh, uh, well, they have the sword. Is there a split around for the harp? Able to find some enemies that are worth a fair amount. Although, as I say that, Tilo hits a wolf, kills a wolf for 24. Sorry, Tilo. That's yeah, a little womp womp in a sense. 
Yeah, I it's um we really haven't seen much as far as uh, oh Marichelle with next level. There's 24 MP. I think that's got to be enough, right? You got to give it a try now. We don't know what DL one's gonna be like. We don't know what DL two's gonna be like. But with 10 heal more, 170 HP at yeah, Marishu, not gonna grind anymore. He's gonna give it a try. Plus, Sherlock's so close to the castle. What do you really have to lose? So again, the problem. Rhetorical question. Yeah, right. Uh, so the problem with Chaos Dragon Lords is you just never have any idea what to expect. In standard, you have a good idea. Okay, we need this many hits. We got this much, that much left over. Again, we have no idea if DL One's gonna gonna show up and hit for for seventy five like those red dragons are. If he's gonna put you to sleep and then DL Two Breath you. Although we have one hundred and seventy HP, we could probably survive a few of those. Um, you don't know how much magic you're gonna have to use on the spike tile to get through. What if there's a demon knight sitting on a spike tile? Wouldn't that be fun? He said. Oh boy. And then there's Dragon Lord 2 that could have heal or sleep, and also, you know, so you might need to stop spell him. He could have tons of stop spell resistance, or he could just decide to have, what is it, 220 is the max HP? So there's really so many variables that who knows what you're going to see. You could see a super easy Dragon Lord 1, a low HP Dragon Lord 2, and, and you could win uh, after using like three heal mores. Um, or it could be significantly more difficult. Oh, there we go. Tila with a nice crit and is able to take out the Demon Knight for that Silver Harp. Oh, that's huge in the race for second. Although DK has got a huge experience lead because he's been grinding. We'll see. I don't know if that experience is going to help as much. He'll have uh, he'll have hurt mores, but uh, he'll have to get to that Demon Knight somehow. But Tilo getting to the Demon Knight's big. Marishu, because it's short Sherlock, already coming up on the spike tile. So we'll see what's waiting there. Maybe. Oh, it's a Star River, and I believe I've seen these run from our run from our runners before, so I don't think we've got too much worry here. All right, looks like it skipped a little bit, but he's through the Star River and into Dragon Lord. So we'll see what DL1 has. Oh, look at this. It's a paper Dragon Lord 1. He hits for 53, 32, and the Dragon Lord is defense broken. 1 and a 12. Oh, he's got a lot of HP, though. Marishow's hit him for, what, somewhere in the area of 120. He's got sleep, but... Sleep. Yeah, he's got sleep, but he hits so weakly. I don't know. I think you just wait to wake up and then smash him in the face again, right? Well, if we ever wake up. Mm. All right, Marisha oh. Irving there and getting put back to sleep. But again, only nine damage, so not a big deal. And there goes the Dragon Lord. So now we'll see if DL2, DL1, no real big problems. DL2, let's see if there's anything there. He gets back attack, but that should be okay. He's going to go for the preemptive stop spell, and he's blocked it. So I think he should be pretty in the clear here. Now that he's blocked the spell, he's probably honestly hoping the Dragon Lord has either sleep or heal. Um, of course, with stop spell, those would be rendered useless and give a free turn to him. Um, I don't think he needs to worry about that, though. I think he's still good. To the best of my knowledge, I mean, I, I haven't seen an attempted sleep spell from DL2, so more than likely it's a heal spell that might be coming, in which case that'll be the that'll, that'll be the repeat. That, that'll be that'll be where the advantage comes in. Yeah, even if he doesn't have any spells though, I think with uh, five more heal mores to go, I think uh, Marisha, well, we don't know how much HP the Dragon Lord has. Marisha looking very good with uh, now four more heal mores to go. I haven't kept count, but uh, definitely chipping away. Oh, and there you go. He's got heal, so he's low HP and he's wasting turns. And there it is. Marichal finishes off with a 15. Get your GGs out. Marishu going to finish. Looks like just under an hour. 
5934 for those interested. And uh, he's going to take first place and five delicious points. So well. Marishu, as he goes, talks to the king, able to get that early Demonite kill in Hawksness and, and propel that. Ride that all the way to the finish. DK back in Hawksness to get his Silver Harp, so he'll probably be shortly behind. I uh, also haven't gotten level 20. Right, meanwhile, Tilo is in Sharlock. He uh, looks like he's going to do a little ex exploratory... Uh, exploratory look at the Dragon Lord, see if he can find a thing. He'll be thrilled to see that uh, Dragon Lord 1 is is harmless. Um, I wonder if he's going to maybe try Dragon Lord 2 early, but 43 MP, uh, I can't think he'll be back here. Yeah, just not quite the time yet, but maybe it's hoping for a little... Eh, just kind of a, a weak... DL1 and DL2, a little paper tiger, and maybe try to sneak in there with the second place. Yeah, well, it's just nice to have the information, too, because I was saying a second ago, there's so many variables that you have no idea what to expect. Now, Teal at least getting some information. Well, gets the stop spell on DL1, so there goes the sleep castings. As we watch DK wrap it up and Tilo complete his information dive, Marishu joining us in in chat here. Uh, welcome, Marishu. GG's to you and congratulations on your win. Yeah, thanks. Oh, wow. Uh, that that uh, grind, though. Wow. Yeah, I want to ask, like, what were you thinking when you died? Well, what was your reaction when you died and, and saw, like, oh, 2,800 to the next level? Um... At that point, I was just so focused, like, um, okay, it'll take this many red dragons to the next level. So I'll just count it out. I can get this, I can at least get 10 with Hurt Mars, and then I can try squeezing some in. I probably won't get it this kill, but uh, within uh, two trips of the king, I should be able to get it. Maybe that'll be enough MP. Spoiler, it wasn't. Yeah, that was the story of the grind every time. Um, you know, maybe we'll get MP this time. Maybe we'll get MP that time. But uh, eventually, you got your 24 MP on. Was it level 20? And we're able to uh, we're able to defeat the Dragon Lord. Uh, any thoughts about the rest of the seed in general? Um, well, I feel like uh, everything had experience that was not in proportion to uh, the health, which was interesting. Um, a lot of things gave low experience, but. Uh, if there wasn't a uh, good grind in uh, Swamp, I was probably just going to find some desert tiles with drones and grind there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just a lot of bulky things with not a lot of HP. And otherwise, I thought the seed was pretty straightforward. Yeah, that kind of takes us full circle back to the beginning of the seed, where that's how you got started was those druins. So um, that really got you off to a quick start. And then um, Demon Knight Friend in Hawksness, huh? Hmm. That was so lucky. What what are the uh, hurt resistance for uh, demon knights? Because uh, I feel that they had to be pretty high. 15, yeah, sixteen. Yeah, that's kind of been a that's been a thing. We saw the other runners fail three, four, five hurt mores um, on that demon knights. So that definitely was was a, a point in your favor for sure. Well, in a practice, see I up. Uh, Back before they fixed the uh, 15 out of 16 stop spell resistance for DL2, I got that on first try as well. So maybe I just am good with the 15 out of 16s. So I need you around to cast my spells for me is what I'm hearing. Just uh, don't trust me uh, if it's a 1 in 16, because I'm going to fail those every time. Sounds like a plan. You take the 15 out of 16s, I'll take the 1 out of 16s, and we'll call it even. <laughs> Sounds like a good deal. All right. Meanwhile, DK has got through DL1. He's on to DL2. We know now that DL2 has uh, has heal. I didn't catch if he threw the uh, exploratory stop spell out. Yeah, we're seeing from chat he did. 
So this should be pretty routine once he gets him down and once the Dragon Lord starts healing, it'll be not a problem. So DK should be wrapping up shortly here. Uh, Marishu, we saw you uh, go into Sharlock looking for the sword, of course, early, and that was, of course, a good play. Sadly, it wasn't there, but uh, we were kind of talking about uh, if the sword was there, it could have been one of the smallest, like, maps we'd ever seen, or necessary maps we'd ever seen. Um, kind of nice. Didn't have to rely on any mapping skills there. Yeah, I was hoping, but uh, the dream was dead. But uh, I didn't have to look too much further to find the sword. Uh, I think I just went, like, a bit west, a bit south, and there it was. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, but it still would have been pretty funny if everything you needed was, like, one screen away from the castle. As DK did finish off his Dragon Lord 2, he's going to finish at 105.20. Um, so about just about five minutes, six minutes behind uh, you, Marishu. He's going to finish in second place and collect three pretty delicious points. Yeah, they're, 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 they're rather tasty. Now, also, as we look to the right side of our screen for the race for third, uh, Beta was pointing out in chat that Tilo got a ton of information about that Dragon Lord fight. He was able to, uh, he was able to find out that uh, Dragon Lord One was pretty much nothing to be worried about, and he got to the point where he found out Dragon Lord Two had a spell. I believe he did see the heal, so Tilo has a huge informational advantage there, um, and he has his. He did get the harp. He did get uh, his rainbow drop, so he's in grind and go. It's going to take him some red dragons to finish it, but uh, he's got everything he needs and all the knowledge he needs to wrap this one up. Meanwhile, it looks like Shaddy's still on the hunt in the overworld, looking probably for Cantlin and the coordinates, I think, hoping the, the harp is there. Um, that Demon Knight's really given him a lot of trouble, and that's the last piece he needs. So he definitely was uh, on the low end, the short end of that 15 out of 16 stick. Most certainly. And Tilo working on the grind. Shaddy is... exploring? Perhaps looking for... Cantlin? Yeah, I think he's seen everything else, so I think he's got to be looking around for Cantlin, hoping, hoping that that Demonite um, has got uh, nothing underneath him and the, the curse belt points and the coordinates, because I don't think he's found Cantlin. He does have the princess. I think he is looking for Cantlin and hoping that the coordinates are there, but uh, I mean, we know the Demonite's hiding the harp, but I think he's hoping for Cantlin. Um, I didn't see, DK was the only one that found Cantlin. Um, and I didn't really see where it was, so I don't know if it's a long walk away or if it's tucked away in a corner somewhere. So, um, I have a question for you. Uh, did anyone find the death necklace? Uh, yes. DK found it in, I want to say, the grave, the top of the grave. Yeah, it was in the top three of the grave. That's correct. Okay, yeah, that's another cave I didn't find. Also in chat, Beta clarifying uh, that he saw enough rounds to know he didn't have sleep. Got it, got it. So he didn't see heal, but he knows that if there's an ability, it's heal. And he knows he probably doesn't have to worry about sleep because he last lasted enough rounds and didn't see it. So. Uh, Camion, uh, Marishu's final time was a 59.34. Just snuck in sub hour. Shaddy refinding the mountain cave. Yeah, this is one of the ones that is the uh, that's the worst when you are looking around for one location. He's definitely looking for for uh, Cantlin, and you just can't find it. You you go you start going in circles. You uh you uh you see things you've already seen before. It's almost enough to convince me I should start mapping, but uh, not quite enough yet. So, like I said, I don't know where exactly it is, but hopefully. Hopefully he'll run into it soon, so it kind of points him back to Hawksness and the harp they needs. Meanwhile, Tilo 
Oh, look at that. He's going to take his information knowledge. He's going to try to go on 18 with 54 MP and try to make that work. Yeah, so as Tilo approaches the uh, Dragon Lord, Marishu, any uh, any thoughts as you as you came up to the Dragon Lord? We were saying that uh, you know there are lots of possibilities, lots of variables involved. It's kind of hard to know what to expect. Did you have any expectations, or just uh, you know try it out and see what happens? Um, I figured if it was really really bad, and uh, I thought that it probably was bad because that's why no one had not done yet. Um, but I figured if it was really bad, then. Uh, at least I'd have info going forward, but um, I think the only thing I was afraid of was a uh, DL2 with a ton of HP and spells, and I couldn't get a stop spell off, because otherwise my stats were pretty good. Yeah, we were mentioning one of the nice side effects to uh, having to wait around for so much MP was that all the other stats were really good. I mean, you had a ridiculous, what was it, 170 HP or something. Your attack power is in the 140s. Your defense was 94. So yeah, definitely, um, you know, nice that you you uh, at least had all the other stats, even if the MP was a little low. Yeah, so like I said, the only thing I was worried about is if even swinging with a bunch of doubles, I still couldn't deal enough damage. Otherwise, I thought it was a pretty good time to uh, go dive. Yeah, definitely was a good time to go at least try and yeah, get some information. Uh, Camion, thanks thanks to Camion for putting up the stats, or Lord, oh, Lord of the Sin. Thanks to whoever for putting up the stats. Um, very funny to see DL1 had double the HP of DL2, which I don't see that very often. All right, we're joined now by our second place finisher, DK. DK, GG's to you. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I think I have one question to start off with for you, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but, uh, so Demon Knights, huh? Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a special, uh, seed, especially at the beginning. Yeah, we were pointing out that, uh, if the sword had been, the sword wasn't very far away, but the sword had been, like, in Sharlock or something, you would have literally had everything you needed within like one screen of the castle. Yeah, well, if you if you weren't like me and uh, completely missed those, uh, you know, Garen Ham and Hawksness right next to each other until you've searched half the other continent in the entirety of the first continent. Right, you did take uh, a little trip around. I mean, you were still able to get some experience while doing that, but yeah, you did kind of have to go a ways before you found Hawksness, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, they were definitely the last places. I obviously knew that uh, Hawks had the uh, harp at that point. I had everything else and and uh, knew there was a belt, so. Yeah, I kind of like that play. Um, yeah, I guess you just answered that question too um, about you going and uh, doing the grind before the Demon Knight, before the harp. Yeah, when I hit him the first time, you know, um, I did a one and two misses and then I just like, I was like, yeah, let's try and see if Hurt Moore will land. And then when it didn't land, I was like, he's probably got, you know, 15, 16 presents. And I'm obviously not killing him. So let me just let him kill me if I don't kill him here. And I'll go grind until I'm strong enough. Right. Especially knowing that the harp and the uh, rainbow drop weren't super urgent. Uh, Tilo did finish at 18, by the way. So very nice taking his uh, taking his knowledge of the Dragon Lord uh, 1 and Dragon Lord 2 and using it to finish with 54 MP. So... Uh, level 18 finish for him, uh, finishing in third place, two delicious points, uh, with a time of 112.51. And Shaddy has immediately forfeited upon seeing the third place finish. Yeah, he tried that Demon Knight over and over and over again and just could not make it work, so... Tilo Tilo saying he uh, unfortunately hasn't been feeling well, so he's going to uh, pass on uh, on joining us here. But GG's to him. He will pick up uh, third place and two points in the uh, in the standings. And Shaddy will be by shortly. So how did everybody else's beginning go? I think I went like eight or nine minutes without a uh, kill. Yeah, so that was one where even though you had the uh, even though you had the armor to start with, which was great, there was a lot of tickle fighting going on. Um, I believe Druins, Marishu got Druins early on. Uh, I think I can't remember the other ones. 
The Fairy Water and Breconair, I think, was a nice move, though. I'm not sure if anyone else uh, acquired Fairy Waters. Um, I was looking around uh, for a town. Uh, my goal was to try finding a town so I could either buy torches or fairy waters, but I ended up getting levels before I could find my way to any of the towns. And I was the exact opposite. <laughs> Definitely found Breck. Yeah, and I got lucky that there was stuff with low HP nearby. We are joined by Shaddy, who had a, uh, yeah, speaking of the start, had a tough start. And man, a tough, uh, I want to say tough finish too, uh, you know, as I asked DK, I was sort of asked DK, uh, so how, how about Demon Knights, huh? Yeah, that was, that was rough going at the beginning. <laughs> I didn't really know what to do, but uh, I haven't played enough. Where was, uh, where was the town and the um, staff cave? Couldn't seem to find them there at the end. Uh, the staff cave was, I think, sort of north of Sharlock. Uh, the town, I think you were looking around for Cantlin. I didn't catch where Cantlin was, um, but the harp was hiding underneath that quite despicable demon knight. Oh, no kidding. Get out of here. Yeah, there were many missed hurt moors, and there were many uh, many attempts made on that on that demon knight for sure. Cantlin was in a little alcove just east of like Cola Mountain, kind of down that way. Yeah, I must have, must have just missed it. I missed, uh, yeah, and I couldn't find Staff Cave either, so. I was going nowhere quickly. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the, uh, that was one of the sort of, uh, I don't know, separations in this, in this race was, uh, that demon knight and how fast he let people, he let people get by and, uh, he was having none of it for you. I just couldn't believe I couldn't get to those towns. I made it to like one tile away a couple times. <laughs> so close. Yeah. You were the first to see them. And I think, uh, even though you took a couple deaths, I think you were the second one into them actually. So. We were actually able to kill stuff at the beginning without any, um, my thought process was to go get items or, you know, find a chest or something that had something I could hit somebody with or buy a sword or anything. It didn't seem like I could kill anything at the beginning. It's just either hitting for one or missing. Yeah, and kind of answering the question DK asked earlier was how did people get started? Uh, well, slowly, but yeah, it was a lot of uh, a lot of what you said, right? Was you got the armor, so you'd have to tickle fight something, right? Zero to one for them, one to two for me, zero to one for them, one to two for me, and eventually, um, something would maybe go away. Oh well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> It was fun. That that is the nature of chaos. What can you say? Thanks for uh, thanks for putting on the restream and the commentary. GGs to the other runners. Yeah, GG. See if we can learn how to do these uh, flags for next week. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh... Next week, we have the position rounds. We've got, uh, so you'll be going up against people roughly around the same point values as you, chance to move up in the standings and force those evildoers near you down in the standings uh, with some tiebreaker flags, which are pretty crazy. Uh, they're pretty quick. They're pretty variable. So we're going to do two races, and it's a, a total points amongst the two races to determine who wins and who gets second, third, and fourth. Um, any thoughts yet, guys? You looked ahead. Uh, I don't know if you've looked off that far ahead, but any thoughts about that third week? Those seed, th those seeds are fun. I've played a few of them. Um, it'll, it should be a good time to see how people do. I've uh, never done that flag set before. I'm looking forward to trying it, but uh, I feel like after uh, winning this seed, that my chances went way down for next week. Well, I don't know about you, Ferran. I think uh, maybe I'll take a break from commentating next week. Those seeds go awfully quick. I don't know if I can talk that fast. <laughs> so we'll just uh, we'll just recruit the Seawolf one for all of them. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. 
No, I don't think that uh, that will quite work out so well. Oh, I'm gonna get heat for that, I'm sure. But no, that it'll it'll certainly be interesting. The position rounds and the twin tiebreaker trials, easy for me to say. Uh, but as far as the chaos, it certainly is not over for the week as of yet. We've got one more race coming your way tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern on a network yet to be determined. And that is going to be Monsieur Slime against Centroid 41, Sausage Link, and Edge. And then we've got, we've got your race, Ryguy, coming up uh, the day after tomorrow this thursday night at 10 p.m eastern oh my chances of winning that went down drastically now that you've reminded the other runners when it is oh is that how that works my best chances of winning where they would all forget i don't know that those are great chances though well time will certainly tell and then we have it looks like one race scheduled for Friday night and three that are scheduled for Saturday night and then two that are yet to be scheduled. So a lot of uh, chaotic conundrums still to come here over the course of the week. All right. Chaotic conundrums. I don't even know how to follow that up. So I'm just going to say uh, anyone have any last uh, words about this little seed? I just wanted to say thanks for uh, hosting this and uh, broadcasting all the people behind the scenes. Appreciate it every time. Yeah, same. Uh, thanks to uh, everyone who made this stream uh, possible, and thanks to uh, the people who are making this tournament possible. Uh, it's a lot of fun and wouldn't happen without all the uh, work that goes on behind the scenes. Um, and the less we talk about this particular seed, the better. <laughs> Straight Most to the track. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to give all four of our runners a follow as uh, they certainly endured the, uh, the the chaos here and gave a heck of a race for you. And also show some love to the folks behind the scenes, our restreamer, Lord of the Synth, our tracker, our Kigalus and Kami and Renekai, and for my broadcast partner, Ryguy3745. If you liked my commentary tonight, my name is Ferran Burgundy. If you didn't, my name is Edgeworth who was supposed to be here, filling in on last notice. Thank you so much for tuning in here to Randomania 4, and until next time, stay classy, my friends, and more importantly, stay safe.